Hello, my name is Zhou Zili, an undergraduate in IIIS Tsinghua University. Today, I'm going to talk about my recent work with Siddhartha Banerjee, Vincent Cohen Adat, and Anupam Gupta, graph searching with predictions. First, let's have a look at the problem definition. In an undirected unknown graph G, an agent starts off at some root R looking for a goal G. As shown in the figure, the red vertices are explored and the blue ones are on the boundary. At each time step t, the agent chooses a vertex on the boundary and move to there, paying the distance as the movement cost. The objective is to minimize the total movement cost when the agent reaches the goal. Because it is an online problem, we consider competitive analysis, comparing the cost of the algorithm to the optimal cost incurred in hindsight, which is just capital D, the distance between the root and the goal. However, even in trees, this problem has very pessimistic guarantees in the absence of any further constraints. Consider a complete binary tree with depth D, and the goal lies on one of the leaves. Then the agent has to reach half of them in expectation to find the goal, incurring a cost of omega 2 to the d. So, pre previous works enforced topological constraints on the graph. For example, they consider cases like grid or k pass from the roots. In our work, however, we consider the graph searching problem in the advice setting, which is each node v gives a prediction fv of its distance to the goal. If all the predictions are correct, then the problem is very trivial. We can just walk downhill, which is um, starting from the root of distance d to the goal, we find its neighbor of distance d minus 1, then d minus 2, da, 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 and then finally, we can get the root in d steps, which is just the optimal. But what if some of the predictions are incorrect? We want to answer this question because in real life, black box but unreliable predictions are very often. So it's important to know how to use these unreliable advice. Given the unreliable predictions, our goal is to find a robust algorithm, which finds the goal incurring a cost of d plus some function of the prediction error. Basically, if the error is very low, then our algorithm should also have very low cost. Uh, however, if the prediction is not so accurate, they have a lot of errors, then we can have more budgets. Here, we use delta to denote the maximum degree in the graph and e as a number of vertices, which give wrong predictions. We can see this function of arrow, it has a lower bound of delta times the arrow term. To prove the lower bound is easy. Consider the tree where the root has delta disjoint paths of length d leaving it, and each node gives null prediction, as shown in the figure. Then, by definition, the only erroneous nodes are those on the path from R to G, which are the just the orange nodes. So the error is D. But since the prediction gives no information, the agent has to reach at least half of the leaves to find the goal. So the cost is at least omega delta times the error term. Here, we finish the proof. Our main result is stated by this theorem. We give an algorithm, chi x, and prove that it almost achieves the best performance. This part will be the main part of this talk. Now, we come to the exploration problem. Here, exploration problem is just the problem we have discussed before. We use this name to distinguish with a simpler version called a planning problem, which is also discussed in our paper. For time's sake, this talk will not cover the planning problem parts. Let's first get some intuitions about the problem, starting from the null prediction cases. Recall that null prediction is just, as shown in the figure, the nodes on the i's layer give prediction i plus d. Then here is an observation. If a is the neighbor, neighbor of the root such that goal lies in a subtree, then only the nodes in a subtree give wrong predictions. It's, uh, it's just by definition. See the orange nodes in the figure. This fact gives us an idea. If we balance the exploration on both sides, um, basically uh, almost we explore the same number of orange and red nodes, then because the orange nodes are erroneous, the total exploration can be bounded by arrow. 
for the movement cost, we can further use doubling technique to bound it. We will all see it later. Based on the ideas, we can give this simple algorithm. For simplicity, we can just imagine the tree is a binary tree. The algorithm is, first, we arbitrarily choose one child of the root as a side to explore. Then we do DFS on the current side of the root until the nodes explored on the current side is at least twice the nodes explored on the other side. Then we turn to the other side to, to do DFS until the goal is reached. Let's see how this algorithm works. Basically, it explores A subtree for one node, then B subtree for two nodes, A subtree for four nodes, something like that. Thus, we can see the red nodes explored is always bounded by twice the orange nodes explored. Thus, we can see the total exploration is bounded by O orange, which is O arrow. Furthermore, by doubling technique, which is uh, we enforce the number of explored nodes to double each time it changes the side, uh, which is ensured by the algorithm, we have the movement cost is bounded by O the exploration. Thus, we get the proof. Having shown the null prediction case, we then present our results in an important special case called the null D case. We consider the case when D is null and hope to generalize the ideas in null prediction cases. The intuitions are very similar. We try to balance the load, which will be introduced later, on each side of every node. Thus, we bound the exploration by the arrow. The movement cost is bounded by O exploration by the doubling technique. We first give several definitions. Anchor. A node U's anchor is the ancestor in a level D plus LU minus FU divided by 2. See the left figure for illustration. The red node's anchor is the yellow one. Here is an important claim. A node U is correctly predicted if and only if its anchor is the least common ancestor of U and G. See the right figure. If the red node's prediction is correct, its anchor should be the yellow node, which is the least common ancestor of the red one and the, and the green one. Note that here we only need D to calculate U's anchor. And also note that in null prediction, all nodes have the root as their anchor by definition. Based on the definition of anchor, we, we then define load sigma i to be the number of nodes in the, sub, in the i subtree of u whose anchor is u. For example, in this case, sigma 1 is equal to 2, which is the number of the green nodes, and a sigma 2 equal to 4, and a sigma is the sum of uh, all the sigma i, which is 6. Now critical. For any nodes u and v, let's a be used child with the smallest load, and B be used child such that V is in B subtree. See the figure. We denote the nodes with anchor U with color red and green, and all other nodes in the bottom subtree with, with, with orange. Then we call U a critical node with respect to V if red is at least twice the green, and red is no smaller than orange. Here we give several examples. The left one is critical. The top right one is not critical because red is 3 and is less than twice the number of green. The bottom right one is not critical because red is smaller than the orange. We can state our algorithm now. At any uh, time step t, while g is not reached yet, do dfs for one step. Let u be vt's anchor. If u is critical with respect to vt, let a be u's child with the smallest load, and then change to a subtree to do, to do dfs. Here we have to note that although d does not appear explicitly in the algorithm, we need it to compute the anchors and loads. For this non-d setting, we prove that uh, given d, this algorithm finds the goal incurring a cost of d plus o delta times the error term. To prove the theorem, first we need to introduce the concept of extra exploration. 
Extra exploration is the subtrees which do not contain G. We further partition it into extra exploration rooted on different nodes on the path from R to G. In our proof, we try to bound the extra exploration by the error terms. And then, because the total exploration is at most D larger than it, the total exploration can also be bounded. Similar to null prediction cases, we also have key observations. For any node U on the path from R to G, let A be its subtree that contains G. Then the cross nodes, which are the nodes whose anchor is U in the upper subtree and other nodes whose anchor is not U. They must give wrong predictions. The proof is just straightforward by the definition of anchor. Also, we state the invariance. Basically, our algorithm in brief is uh, do DFS until critical and then change the side. This maintains the following invariance. For any U on the path from R to G, suppose G lies, on, lies in the upper subtree. Let green nodes be the ones in the upper subtree whose anchor is U. In the lower subtree, let red nodes be the ones whose anchor is U and the orange one be the rest. Then, at least one of the following three statements is true. Red is smaller than twice the green, red is smaller than orange, or the third one. Uh, here, the third one is a special case, and for intuitions, we just ignore it in the following proof. The analysis can be derived by the observations and the invariance. First, from our invariance, we have either the red is smaller than twice the green or red is smaller than orange. So the extra exploration rooted on U, it can be, it is a red plus orange and it can be bounded by O green plus orange. However, by the observations, green and orange nodes are all wrongly predicted. Moreover, the green nodes and the orange nodes for different nodes U, they are disjoint. So the sum of green plus orange for different U, it is bounded by O arrow. Hence, we, we bound the exploration by the arrow. We have bounded the extra exploration. Then to bound the movement cost, we partition all the edge transversals into several parts. And then we use doubling technique to analyze the callback cost caused by each node in the graph. For time's sake, we skip this part in, the, in this talk. For more details, we invite you to read our paper. Given the algorithm for the non-D case, we will now consider the non-D case, which is the exploration problem. Recall our main theorem. Tree X algorithm solves the problem incurring a cost O D plus delta times the error term. Here we give a sketch of our tree X algorithm. The main ideas are each time we explore increasing portions of the tree. If we can find a node whose prediction must be correct, running algorithm one rooted at this node, it solves the problem. So the problem becomes to find a correct predictor. Basically, if most observed nodes, they are correct, we define a tree separator and prove that its prediction can be found out. Otherwise, most observed nodes, they are incorrect, then the error is very large, so we have budget to explore further. Note that here we can sample to get the correct predictor. However, randomizing leads to extra log terms. Now we define a tree separator. Given tree T, the tree separator is a node V such that it has two neighbors A and B, and both of A and B subtree they have the size larger than t divided by 2 delta. Two claims are made. First, this tree separator exists. And second, we can know its correct prediction. First, we prove its existence. Let v be the central of the tree, which is deleting v breaks t into a forest containing subtrees of size at most t divided by 2. Let A and B be the two neighbors with largest subtrees. Then by pigeonhole theorem, we can have that they are just the neighbors we are looking for, and V 
is just the tree separator. Then we define the concept of vote. V's vote for C is FV minus the distance between C and V. And the dominant vote in A subtree is the vote which more than half of the nodes in A subtree hold. Here we should note that if V's prediction is correct and G does not lie in A subtree, V's vote is just the distance from C to G. The proof of this observation is straightforward by definition. Now we can see the proof. We state the complete observation here. For any correct node U, if G lies in different subtrees with U, V's vote is just distance from C to G. Otherwise, the, votes, the vote is smaller. When the tree explored is large enough, at most half of the nodes in A, B subtree, they tell the lie. So either, the, either A and B subtree, they do not have dominant votes, or the dominant votes tell the truth. If G is not in A subtree, then by the observation, the vote is just the distance. Otherwise, the dominant vote does not exist or is smaller than the distance. Since G can lie in at most one of the, the two subtrees, take the maximum of the two dominant votes, we can get the distance from C to G. Finally, we conclude our results and give some open problems. We have solved the graph searching with predictions problem in three cases, but there are still things to discuss. First, how does things come if the advice goes in gradient information instead? One thing to note is that we take the setting of the adversarial arrow, considering the number of errors made in total. The other stronger error setting is the stochastic one, which assumes that each prediction is wrong by a probability. We state in our paper that in adversarial setting, gradient information is not enough. However, if we consider gradient information in stochastic error setting, it is another branch of work called noisy binary search. Also, we only discussed unweighted trees in our work. We have to note that in our setting, any algorithm cannot solve the problem in weighted trees with bounded cost, even when we consider the L1 error instead of the L L0 one. We hope our work can inspire future works and we list some of the probable open problems here. The first and the most natural open direction is to generalize the results to general graphs. We only step a little beyond trees in planning problem and more results are left to the future. Also, reducing the space complexity to use them on very large implicitly defined graphs, it can be interesting then we can use the results in cases such as large DP problems or RL problems, something like that. And finally, multiple agent settings and other broader forms of advice are also in triggering directions. Thanks for listening to our presentation, and we invite you to take a look at our paper for more details.